Income tax 2023-2024. Business use of your home daycare facility. Get ready and some coffee because we need extreme concentration when dealing with income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Most of this information can be found in publication 946, How to Depreciate Property, Section 179, Deduction, Special Depreciation Allowance, Makers, Listed Property, and more. Tax year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income, but here having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. Remember, in the Schedule C from the sole proprietorship rolls into line one income of our income tax formula. The Schedule C itself basically an income statement having business income minus business expenses which you could call business deductions resulting in in essence net business income which is what rolls in from the schedule c to line one income of the formula the formula outlining the calculation on the form 1040 of which we see the first page here the schedule c ultimately rolling into line number eight additional income from schedule one this is the schedule one additional income and adjustments to income part number one additional income schedule c rolling into line three business income or loss this is the schedule c profit or loss from business having an income statement or p l profit and loss format income minus expenses we here focused on the expenses the category that usually has the most components to it, some expenses being more difficult than others, such as the home office expense. Why? Because the home office expense, as we've talked about in prior presentations, is one where it's difficult to break out the business versus the personal, which is what we try to do from a bookkeeping standpoint, making the tax input as easy as possible because even if the bookkeeper did a perfect job, then we would get an income statement and we can input all the expenses that were provided to us by the bookkeeper in the Schedule C. But the home, because of its nature, because we might have an office within it, means that certain expenses for the entire home need to be broken out between the personal portion and the business portion. And typically we're going to have to do that within the the uh, tax return possibly using a ratio calculation to do that now normally we have to figure out then if the home is the is is the principal uh, office for example to determine whether it would qualify and if it does qualify then we have to use either the actual method or the simplified method and uh, then figure out the proportion of business versus the personal those uh, things that we need to do get more complex when we have a daycare situation because now we're not looking at like a home office type of situation but rather we're using the home for daycare which means that we're probably going to be using part of our home both for business and for the personal side of things 
due to the nature of a daycare facility. Therefore, the rules are a little bit different when you're trying to figure out if it qualifies as the business use of the home, number one. And then number two, uh, the calculation of the proportion of business versus personal, you would think might need to be altered in some way as well, because it's not like you use that place exclusively for business because it's a daycare facility. So daycare is kind of the exception to uh, the general rule that we're diving into here. So daycare facility. So if you use space in your home on a regular basis for, for providing daycare, you may be able to claim a deduction for that part of your home even if you use the same space for non-business purposes. So remember when it was like a home office, we had that exclusivity type of thing. We had to think about, is it my principal place of business and whatnot? Are we doing our managerial kind of work in the home office, for example? Different kind of rules applying here, once again, daycare. To qualify for this exception to the exclusive use rule, you must meet both the following requirements. So you must be in the trade or business of providing daycare for children, persons age 65 or older, or persons who are physically or mentally unable to care for themselves. So you must have applied for, been granted, or be exempt from having a license, certification, registration, or approval as a daycare center or as a family or group daycare home under state law. Uh, you do not meet these requirements if your application was rejected or your license or other authorization was revoked. So once again, the daycare generally being, you must be in the trade or business of providing daycare for children, persons age 65 or older, or persons who are physically or mentally unable to care for themselves, general idea. All right, figuring the deduction. So if you elect to use the simplified method for your home, figure your deduction as described earlier and using the simplified method under figuring the deduction. So we talked about the simplified method in a prior section, the general idea being that uh, when, we're, when we're trying to figure the actual deduction, we can use something similar to what people are usually familiar with, with like an automobile, where we might be able to choose between like a mileage method and the actual uh, write-off method. And the mileage method in part helps us from not having to deal with the whole depreciation thing. Similarly, with the business use of the home, you might be able to use the simplified method or the actual method. If you own the home as opposed to renting the home, then the simplified method could help you to, again, avoid having to do that whole thing with the real estate uh, calculation for depreciation and whatnot, which can be advantageous. However, often it's gonna come out to an amount that is lower than the actual amount that you would calculate if you're in a high cost of living area in the United States, such as like California or like New York or something like that. All right. So if you are figuring your deduction using the actual expenses and you regularly use part of your home for daycare, figure what part is used for daycare as explained in business percentage earlier under figuring deduction. If you also use that part exclusively for daycare, deduct all the allowable expenses subject to the deduction limit as explained earlier. So if the use of part of your home as a daycare facility is regular, but not exclusive, so now you're not using it exclusively for the daycare, you must figure the percentage of time uh, that part of your home is used for daycare. So notice this would kind of make sense if you're trying to figure out how you would do this. Remember the general idea would be, well, we can figure out the percentage of the home that's used for business, but now if you're dealing with part of the home that is used partially for business and partially for personal, you would have to figure out some kind of ratio you would think for the amount that was used for business versus personal. So a room that is available for use throughout each business day and that you regularly use in your business is considered to be used for daycare throughout each business day. So you do not have to keep records to show the specific hours the area was used for business. So the record keeping becomes another kind of issue because you're not generally going to be providing that record keeping to the IRS when you do the tax return. You're just going to be giving them the end result, the end numbers to calculate the deduction. However, the business use of the home is usually a fairly large deduction. So if you were to get an audit, 
that's probably one of the things they're going to question and you're going to want to have you know some reasonable calculations in terms of how exactly you came out with these numbers so you can use the area occasionally for personal use however a room you use only occasionally for business does not qualify for the deduction tip so to find the percentage of time you actually use your home for business compared to the total time used for business to the total time uh, that part of your home can be used for all purposes you can compare the hours of business use in a week with the number of hours in a week so we could try to basically say what's the average on a week amount of time we're trying to figure out the hours so then you could you know figure out the number of hours within a week okay or you can compare the hours of business use for the year with the number of hours in the year so it's 8760 in 2023 if you started or stopped using your home for daycare in 2023 you must prorate the number of hours based on the number of days the home was available for daycare let's look at an example this is getting crazy we need some examples here uh, Rainy used the basement at home to operate a daycare business for children. Rainy figures the business percentage of the basement as follows. So you got the square footage of the basement, 1,600 feet. So she went down there with the ruler and she length versus width multiplied together, right? Divided by the square footage of the home, which she probably already has because when they bought the home, its square, square foot footage was given, right? So we're saying 50% then, uh, 50%. Rainy used the basement for a daycare on average of 12 hours a day, five days a week for 50 weeks a year. Okay, so during uh, other 12 hours a day, the family, right, because there's 24 hours in a day, right, the family, they slept for like eight of those probably. Uh, the family could use the basement so rainy figures the percentage of time the basement was used for daycare as follows number of hours used for daycare 12 times 5 uh, times the 50 uh, weeks that gives us a total of 3,000 hours total number of hours in a year there's going to be uh, 24 times 365 24 hours a day times the number in a year number of days in a year 365 that gives us the 8760 so that gives us 34.25 percent so rainy can deduct 34.25 percent of any direct expenses for the basement however because Rainey's indirect expenses are for the entire house, Rainey can deduct only 17.13% of the indirect expenses. Rainey figures the percent for their indirect expenses as follows. So in other words, when you're talking about direct expenses for the basement, so they painted the basement itself as an improvement, then you would think that you would get a business deduction for the portion of time that it is business use versus the personal use but indirect expenses are defined as those expenses that you paid for the entire house such as the utility bill for example uh, that you're paying for the entire home which you need to be allocating to the business portion of the home the basement versus the non-business which isn't using at all for the home and then the amount that's applied to the basement would also need to be applicable from the bit you'd have to multiply the business usage versus the personal usage of the basement right so rainy figures the percentage for these okay so here we see we got the business percent of of the basement 50 percent multiplied by the percentage of time used for daycare that's why you have the indirect expenses. She came out to the 17.13 for things like the utility bill expenses for the entire house that you're applying to the basement and then applying to the business use portion of the basement. So Rainey com completes form 8829 part one, figuring the percentage of the home used for business, including the percentage of time the basement was used. In part two, Rainey figures their deductible expenses. Rainey uses the following information to complete part number two, gross income from the daycare business, $50,000. Expenses not related to the business use of the home, $25,000. So she has income, so it's, we don't currently have a loss, 
Therefore, you would think the deduction that we calculate for the business use of the home would be allowable up to the 25000 at which point the IRS might say, hey, we don't like losses. If you're making money, we want a piece of it. We're here for you. We're your silent partner. We want a piece. But if you lose money, then you're, we don't want anything to do with you, loser. Get <laughs> this, is, this is a general idea. Anyway, so then you have the rent. You've got the utilities. You've got the painting of the basement. So Rainey, Rainey enters their tentative profit, 25000 on line eight. So this figure is the same as the amount on line 29 of their Schedule C form 1040, bottom line of the income statement, income minus expenses, not including the home office. The expenses they paid for the rent and utilities relate to their entire home. Therefore, Rainey enters the amount paid for the rent on line 19, column B, and the amount paid for utilities on line 21, column B. Rainey uh, shows the total of these expenses on line 23, column B. For line 24, Rainey multiplies the amount on line 23, column B, by a percentage on line 7 and enters the result 1585 Rainey paid $500 to have the basement painted. Painting is a direct expense. So now she painted the basement. So that isn't like the utility bill. It's going directly to the basement. And therefore, if the basement was used 100% for, for business, you would think you would get 100% of it written off. But it's not used 100% for business because we have to figure out the number of days it was used for daycare versus the number of days it's not used for daycare or hours, I believe it was. However, because the basement was not used exclusively for daycare, Rainey must multiply 500 by the percentage of the time the basement was used for daycare. That was 34.25%, if, if you do not recall. I know it's getting a long problem here, a little confusing. Rainey then enters 171, which is the 34.25% times 500 on line 20, column A. Rainey then adds 23, line 23, column A, and line 24 and enters 1,756, which is the $171 plus the $1,585 on line 26. This uh, is less than Rainey's deduction limit, line 15. So Rainey can deduct the entire amount because she didn't have a loss, right? Uh, Rainey follows the instructions to complete the rest of part two and enters 1,756 on line 34 and 36. Then Rainey carries the 1,756 to line 30 of their Schedule C form 1040. Example two, let's take a look at another one. So assume the same facts as example one, except that Rainey uh, also has another room that was available each business day for children to take naps in. This was the nap room, as opposed to the other daycare facilities, which I assume are the bathrooms for the children, because that's what a facility, a facility is the, I don't know what, that's not true. Sorry about that. Anyway, although Rainey did not keep a record of the number of hours the room was used for naps, it was used for part of each business day nap room that's the timeout room you know what they really use it for i'm counting to 10 or you're going to the nap room anyway since the room was available for business use during regular operating hours each business day uh, and was used regularly in the business it is considered used for daycare throughout each business day the basement and room are 60 percent of the total area of the home all right, so now we're up to 60% that's being used as the daycare facility. So figuring Rainey's expenses, 34.25 of, of any direct expense for the basement and room are deductible. In addition, 20.55%, which is the 34.25 times 60% for indirect expenses are deductible. Example three, assume the same facts as in example one. So we're back to example one facts, except that Rainey stopped using the home for daycare facilities on June 24th, 2023. She couldn't take it anymore. Dang kids driving crazy. I don't care if it, I don't care if we need the money to pay the rent. I'm not even, I'm not doing it. I'm going to keep my sanity. So she stopped the daycare business. So Rainey used the basement for daycare an average of 12 hours a day, five days a week, but only for 25 weeks out of the year. 
So during the other 12 hours a day, right, she probably slept and tried to take pill popping, pop some pills or something, try to regain a little sanity. So during the other 12 hours a day, Rainey's family could ha could still use the basement. Rainey figures the percentage of time the basement was used for business as follows. Number of hours used for daycare. So 12, uh, 12 hours a day times five, five days a week, but only for 25 weeks out of the year. That's the t numerator. 1,500 divided by the total number of hours during the period used, which was uh, 24 hours a day times 175. That's given us the 35.71. Rainey can deduct 35.71 of any direct expenses for the basement. However, because the indirect expenses are for the entire house, Rainey can deduct only 17.86% of the indirect expenses. Rainey then figures the percentage for their indirect expenses as follows. Business percent of the home used is the 50% based on you would think the square footage calculation right multiplied by the percentage of time used for the daycare which we calculated at 35.71 percentage of indirect expenses 17.86 meals so if you provide food for your daycare recipients we have to feed them too we have to feed them they're already using our facilities anyways do not include the expense as a cost using for home for business Claim it as a separate deduction on your Schedule C. So then you might say, well, that would be a normal operating expense for food that, you're, that, uh, that, you, that you would put on the Schedule C, you would think, not related to the home office or daycare facility. So you can never deduct the cost of food consumed by you or your family. You can deduct a business expense 100% of the actual cost of food consumed by daycare recipients. So whenever we get into food, we get into like meals and entertainment and that kind of thing for normal businesses. But if it's a daycare facility and you're providing them like lunch or something, you would think food would be an ordinary and necessary expense, fully deductible generally, possibly not as part of the home, but as just a normal operating expense. So see standard meal and snack rates. Uh, later for an optional method for, for eligible children and generally only use 50% of the cost of food consumed by your employees. So if the food was for the employees, that's when you could run into this meals and entertainment uh, kind of situation. So whenever we deal with meals, if it gets a little bit messy, we want to make sure that we're properly allocating the expenses of uh, the meals so that we can see if there's any limitation for the 50% or if it's meals and entertainment versus a legitimate full cost or expense. All right, so for more information on meals that meet these requirements, you can see meals in chapter two of publication 15B, employer's tax guide uh, to fringe benefits. So if you deduct the actual cost of food for your daycare business, keep a separate record with receipts of your family's food costs. Now, again, this would be something that you would think the IRS would be looking at if they were to audit you, right? You're going you're gonna to write off what you write off. If they question you, they're probably going to be saying, if you wrote off food, did you try to write off your entire grocery bill for personal and the daycare or did you properly allocate the costs to to what you actually fed the kids right you got a bunch of starving kids in there that look like skin skinny as a toothpick and whatnot and you're writing off the food all this food bill doesn't look like you fed you know you can see that so they anyway reimbursements you receive from a sponsor under the child and adult care food program of the Department of Agriculture are taxable only to the extent they exceed their expenses for food for food for eligible children. If your reimbursements are more than your expenses for food, show the differences as income in part one of Schedule C. <clears throat> so obviously any kind of program that you're gonna get reimbursements for food should be used to pay for food. And uh, if, if you get, if obviously if you get income that's supposed to be allocated for food, but you didn't need that much to pay for the food, then that would basically be income. Unfortunately, a lot of times these kind of programs that are supposed to be aid kind of programs, 
could be taken advantage of, right? So you buy the food, they don't actually buy the food, which is kind of sad. But so if your food expenses are greater than the reimbursement, show the differences as an expense in part five of Schedule C Form 1040. Do not include payment or expenses for your own children if they are eligible for the program. So you don't get a special deduction for your own kids. No one else gets that kind of thing. You got to take care. You got to do that. So, so follow the procedure even if you receive a Form 1040 miscellaneous, miscellaneous information uh, reporting a payment from the sponsor. All right, standard meal and snack rates. So if you qualify for a family daycare provider, you can use the standard meal and snack rates instead of actual costs. So this might be a little bit easier on the bookkeeping to use the standard meal and snack rates because of course the bookkeeping when you're buying groceries is inevitably gonna get kind of messy because it's gonna be difficult to break out the personal versus the business. It's like, well, I can't eat that. You can't eat those those cookies families because those were bought with the daycare funds and not you know it's going to be confusing you're not going to be able to keep people out of the cookies anyway so to so to compute the deductible cost of meals and snacks provided to eligible children so for these purposes a family daycare provider is a person engaged in the business of providing family daycare who cares daycare Family daycare is a child care provider to eligible children in the home of the family daycare provided. Uh, the care must be non-medical, not uh, involve a transfer of legal custody, and generally less than 24 hours each day. And eligible children are minor children receiving family daycare in the home of the family daycare provider. Eligible children do not include children who are full-time or part-time residents in the home where the child care is provided or children whose, whose parents or guardians are residents in of the same home. That would be like trying to write off the food costs for your own kids, right? Which no one else gets to do typically. So you'd think that's that's a, that's what they're trying to stop. So eligible children do not include children who receive daycare services for pers personal reasons of the provider. For example, if a provider provides daycare services for a relative as a favor to that relative, the child is not an eligible child because in that case, it's not a business situation. It's a personal situation, kind of like a gift situation uh, and so on. So you can compute the deductible cost of each meal and snack you actually purchased and served to an eligible child during the time period you received family daycare using the standard meal and snack rates shown in table three. So you can use the standard meal and snack rates for a maximum of uh, one breakfast, one lunch, one dinner, three snacks per eligible child per day if you receive reimbursements for a particular meal or snack, you can deduct only the portion of the applicable standard meal or snack rate that is more than the amount of the reimbursement. So if you get reimbursed, obviously you can't deduct the, the amount that you got reimbursed for. It's only the amount above the reimbursement you would get a deduction for, you would think. So, so uh, now notice you can confuse that, by the way, with the fees that you receive from like a customer so you might say well i'm getting reimbursed for my expenses that i paid when i get fees from the customer usually that's not how it how it works right if you get if you're getting paid a hundred dollars or whatever a day and then you're spending the the twenty dollars on food then you're not usually going to net them out and say I, okay i got eighty dollars of gross income you're usually going to say i got a hundred dollars of income and $20 of uh, expenses, net income being $80, right? But if you if you got some kind of federal reimbursement uh, for the food, uh, to purchase the food, then you would think maybe you'd, you'd put the food on there at the net of the, of the reimbursement because rather than it being income. Okay, so you can use either the standard meal and snack rates or actual costs to calculate the deductible cost of food provided to eligible children in the family daycare for any particular tax year. So if you choose to use the standard meal and snack rates for a particular tax year, 
You must use the rates for all your deductible food costs for eligible children during that tax year. However, if you use the standard meal and snack rates uh, in any tax year, you can use actual costs to compute the deductible cost of food in any other tax year. In other words, we have this question about consistency that often comes up, right? Which, which method do I have to use? You would think that there wouldn't be the same kind of problem with the consistency as, for example, you have when you choose like a depreciation method. In other words, when we have the, the auto use, for example, if, if I choose the depreciation method, the actual method, the depreciation is usually something that's going to have, a, have an impact on future periods, which might lock me into using that and my, not being able to easily go back and forth from one year to the other between the mileage method and the actual method. But here you would think that you would have some ability to go back and forth because choosing one or other method might not have the same kind of impact basically from year to year as like a depreciation calculation in any case. So if you use the standard meal and snack rates, you must maintain records to substantiate the computation of the total amount deducted for the cost of food provided to eligible children. So the record kept should include the name of each child, dates and hours of attendance in the daycare, and the type and quantity of meals and snacks served. So that's fairly detailed list of information there. So you're not just talking like receipts from the grocery store, because again, the problem is, of course, they're going to say, did you spend them on the kids that the kids actually get the food or not, right? So this information can be uh, recorded in a log similar to the one shown in exhibit A near the end of this publication. So the standard meal and snack rates include beverages, but do not include non-food supplies used for food preparation, service, or storage, such as containers, paper products, or utensils. These expenses can be claimed as a separate deduction on your Schedule C Form 1040. So here's Table 3. This is the standard meal and snack rates. Location of family daycare provider. Uh, states other than Alaska and Hawaii. Here's your rates, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack. And then we have Alaska rates and the Hawaii uh, rates. And the, the one here, the applicable rates for 2023 are the child and adult care food program reimbursement rates in effect on December 31st, 2022.